Good morning, <laughs> and um, thank you for inviting me uh, to the beautiful Helsinki, which I love to visit. Um, and um, I also think it's a good opportunity uh, to exchange ideas. I think we have much to learn from each other, especially uh, in the Scandinavian and Nordic countries. So what I've been asked to, to talk about is a little bit about the family centers in Norway, development, a little bit of history, and um, then I'll, I'll try to talk a little bit about the research that we are currently conducting, try to value the impact of having an organization like that. Um, this is the city of Tromsø. Uh, it's not that much snow at the moment, um, but um, we do have a lot of snow. And uh, the Arctic University is situated in Tromsø. So when we go south and, uh, by car for a couple of hours, we come to Kipisjen. So that gives you an idea how far north. And um, this is the report. Uh, the center where I work is part of the university and uh, the research group, uh, the people standing uh, outside the building is, is my group. Um, we're about 15 people uh, with the mission is to um, work to conduct research uh, that sort of will increase the health and well-being of children and our main focus is on prevention. And as you can see, it is a lot of snow, and part of the year it's not so good for skiing, but we get there. Um, to start with um, the history of family centers in, in Norway, um, in the early 2000s, um, the government initiated a plan for advancing mental health. And as part of that plan, about the center where I work was uh, started up and they decided to try out uh, um, have a trial project with family centers in Norway and it was very much inspired by uh, Familia Centrale, the family centers in Sweden and um, that's where we got the uh, initial idea to establish a type of organization like that and um, funding was allocated um, to six centers uh, that were distributed all over the country. And um, uh, that was the starting. And I have a picture to the top right where one of the early centers are pictured. It's the Socket Family Center. And it's an, in an old beautiful building which I always assumed it was a barn um, that was converted into a family house. But it turns out it's where they produced Akivit, you know, the very strong liquor. Uh, but it has come into new use. Um, and after the trial project, they interviewed the leaders and uh, they also interviewed people working in collaborating services like the specialist healthcare services. And they also talked to the families that had been using these family centers. And of course, this was a very small evaluation, but the findings were positive and uh, the professionals enjoyed working in a collaboration like that. The families, especially those attending the open kindergarten, absolutely loved it. So it was decided to continue with having organizations like that. Um, there were, of course, challenges. And one is that, of course, establishing such a unit in the municipality takes time and effort. And Norway has, well, at the moment, we have 426 municipalities. And we're not a big country, so you can understand that many of the municipalities are quite small, um, but are quite independent in terms of deciding the type of services uh, and how they organize it uh, for the families living there. Um, so it takes time to establish something new. And also working together and working in a slightly different way than previous where services were separated uh, was, was, was challenging, but also rewarding. And here is the map, and here are the initial six centers that were established. 
Uh, now, what does a, a, a family center in Norway normally include? Well, the model, the initial model and the starting point was that it should have an open kindergarten, a place where people can come with the kids, a healthcare clinic for children, maternity care, child welfare services, uh, pedagogical educational services, and other things, including family therapists, uh, psychologists, physiotherapists, NGOs, etc. That was the sort of um, the plan, the model. And this was um, sort of inspired by um, the mo a model for prevention. And um, this, this model, the circle, is drawn by uh, Margaret Barry. And it shows the different types of prevention, but the circle includes also uh, empowerment and more uh, health promoting uh, aspects of improving uh, health. And this is the, the drawing that we made of the house, um, and it has different floors and it has a foundation which sort of um, uh, models the, the, the basics, the, the common foundation in terms of the area knowledge that the people working in the house that they share. And the more health promoting uh, part is in the first floor where you enter. That's where you have open kindergarten and health care for all children. Uh, and also that is the part where the universal prevention is sort of uh, the main focus. But of course some families and children need more so you could say that the, the next floor uh, indicates that there should be uh, interventions and something for families that need more and also some children have problems and that um, represents the, the upper part and um, so we use this model it doesn't have to be three floors in this house uh, but think of the model that it should include different types of services for that will cover all the needs that a family and, and uh, the children and young people have. Um, the purpose of the model was to promote good health and well-being, and there were lots of good uh, other sort of um, secondary aims. It should um, facilitate the identification of children more. Uh, it should um, increase uh, support and make services more easily available. It should provide parenting support. It should strengthen local networks among people and it should involve strong user participation. Uh, and it should um, increase um, the, in, the, the availability of interdisciplinary services. And it should also be a place in the neighborhood that people and distribute relevant information. So all of these are, I think, not very controversial. It's the type of services that we like to offer. Um, after some time, we decided, well, we need to see what the municipalities are actually doing. Because one thing is a model that was you know, without uh, paper, but what, what are they actually doing? And and we also um, were interested in finding out how many family centers or family houses, as they were also called, uh, actually exist. Um, we wondered about the organization, uh, the type of services they did, what do they actually do? How does the furnishing look in the house? And so we called all the 426 municipalities because uh, surveys, they have a tendency to get lost on the way. <laughs> and we called them and uh, we found that a total of 150 sort of family center-like organizations exist. Um, the problem was that some municipalities chose not to use the term family center or family house. They called it something else. And some called it family center but when we looked more closely, it didn't really include the uh, yeah, original services that was uh, outlined in the model. So we said, okay, you have uh, three or more services directed at children and families in one 
place uh, on house or building or with a very strong um, focus on collaboration. And that's when we found 150 of them and it's distributed uh, over 133 different colleges. And that's when we have 400 together, so it means that the rest of them, they organize their services in a different way. And here is the map again, and this is where the, the 133 were located. Sort of all over Norway, of course, more in the southern part, where more people live. Um, but basically, um, many municipalities have chosen to try to organize services. Um, we asked them also, um, what, kind, what kind of age group do you normally offer, or is the main focus of the services that you offer? And as we can see, there is a stronger focus on early ages, probably because most of them include uh, maternity care and health care stations for children. That's where almost all families in Norway go to get checkups, the babies are young, calculation, and stuff like that. But uh, some also include services for, uh, for young people and up to the age of 20. But the focus is clearly on, on younger children. We also ask them, um, what kind of services do you have in your house? And um, many of them, uh, as I said, had uh, health care stations, maternity care, but also, also uh, other types of health care um, of, of services for slightly older children. Uh, but not many had, only about uh, a quarter had open kindergarten. That was, uh, which was seen, at least in the Swedish model, uh, as a vital part of uh, the family center, that it should be a common gathering place where people come and also meet professionals from the other service without having to make an appointment for a, a very low threshold. Um, also, some had NGOs that had um, an office there, um, some had psychologists. Norway has decided to have psychologists in all the municipalities to work more preventive, and many of them had chosen to organize the psychology as part of the family house. Um, so we see there's a big variation in terms of what centers or houses actually. One common thing was that 93% or almost all of them had some form of interprofessional team working together. But the meeting frequency, whether or not they used a specific method, that was great variations. Uh, most of them chose uh, to include the family in discussions when there was specific pro problems or family or more uh, help and assistance. <coughs> also, we asked them, what type of, in do you offer any interventions in the family center? And many of them had parent groups. Um, it was parent groups for young parents, old parents, divorced parents, single mothers. Um, many of them were locally uh, um, designed by people working in the family centers. But there were also some who used more the um, traditional uh, interventions or programs that we know like Credible Years and other types groups or uh, treatment for children with, for instance, behavior problems. So those were administered in the family center and sometimes with an add-on counseling by a family therapist or with a follow-up by some of the other professionals working there. Uh, we asked about user participation because that was also one of the arguments that this type of organization should facilitate uh, user participation and also that um, users can be involved in signing the services. Um, slightly 50% had conducted user satisfaction studies 
but only 6% had a, a user sort of advisory board or the, the, the users in, in how the, the, what type of services that we offer. Well, to sum up the findings from this, the, the early survey that they did, that we did is that we had approximately, that this was in 2011, 150 family centers, family houses, or similar organizations. And um, many of them had been uh, developed after this first trial project. Only a quarter included open kindergarten. And they had a variety of different models for organization and whether or not they had a leadership, uh, the type of interventions offered, type of assessment tools, and actually there were almost as many models as municipality. So that makes research very hard. Um, and um, at that point we were interested in um, when municipalities uh, come to us and ask for advice. What kind of advice should we offer in terms of what provides or what leads to better services for um, families and young children. And um, we decided to sign this study which we have called SKO, which means in Norwegian, it means shoe, but um, it is it, it's short for um, collaboration and um, Uh, quality and upbringing in a way. Um, and um, we, even though there are some studies conducted in Sweden from family centers, uh, most of them are small scale, it's basically based on, on uh, mostly interviews with parents and families. And um, uh, we wanted to do a, a larger type of study and have more quantitative da data to be able to say a little bit more about what produces or what leads to uh, improved services. And uh, I'll, I'll, we're mi in the middle of this study now, so this will be more um, preliminary findings. Hopefully uh, I can come back later and talk about the final findings. Um, this is study that we are doing in um, in all over Norway. And of course there are big differences between the small municipalities with maybe a thousand people living there and the bigger cities uh, like Oslo and Bergen who have parts of the city, maybe up to 100,000 people. So the, the type of conditions that the, the professionals working there have uh, is very different. And also the challenges that they um, at the moment, we have included 28 municipalities, and it's around 700 employees and around 2,000 parents. And uh, we have three PhD stu students who uh, are working uh, mostly with, in my center with the quantitative part of the study, but we also have other PhD students uh, in other parts of the country who are combining this with qualitative data. And, um, one of them is Ingun ruling Shesol, who, is, who has chosen to study three family centers more in detail. So she sort of moved into the house and stayed there and um, were, uh, talked to the parents and talked to the professionals who worked there. So that means that we will get both sort of quantitative data and qualitative data so that hopefully uh, we'll be able to offer more uh, research-based um, advice when the municipality come and ask what should we do. Um, and um, we have many research questions, but basically it is what will produce better services for children and families. And is a family center uh, a good way of organizing the services? Will this lead to improved quality? Um, and uh, I'll come back to what we mean with quality, high quality care. Um, but we're also interested, of course, in the users, the families that attend services. 
and uh, how that is related to the way it's organized and uh, also the people working there. Um, because one of the, I think, our key assumption is that the people working at the family center, their knowledge and experience and uh, ability to collaborate is central to the quality of the services. Um, this is a little bit behind the scenes when we're do, in this process of uh, where we do the study. So we have to um, pack all the questionnaires, all men on, and women on deck. Uh, here's a PhD student, Sabine Kaiser. Uh, here is a psychologist, uh, Anna Setrum, or and Karina who's managing us, keeping us all on track. So there's a lot of people involved in my center. And when we do the packing, this is the head of the department. Um, jacket off and into the envelopes. Um, so everyone has to help. Um, and we also uh, have connected um, other researchers to our group, Marietta Kekkonen from Finland and uh, Astrid Ikkarsen from Oslo. And here are also some of the other PhD students. Um, this project is not only a research project because um, our sort of um, task from the government is not only to focus on research but also to provide um, help and ser to be a service for the services, so to speak. So we try to combine this research project with also uh, feedback to the municipalities in terms of how are they doing. And um, we put, we have newsletters, um, and we also try to, to provide them uh, feedback in terms of their own results, which uh, hopefully is an incentive to participate in the study. And uh, the pictures are from Uirana, uh, where um, um, they have recently organized all their services in one big unit. And, um, they had gathered all the people working there, over 50, and um, I was there to provide some input in terms of the data that they had all the questionnaires that they had uh, completed. And um, um, in many cases, the users are very happy with the services and the help that they receive. And um, providing some sort of feedback in terms of that, and having being able to sit back as a professional um, and listen that actually families are extremely grateful um, uh, is, is very interesting. Um, now let's return a little bit to the question about service quality, what it is. What do we mean by providing high quality or good services? Well, there are many, you could say, objective indicators and um, uh, it could be um, having uh, fewer children referred to child protection services. It could be um, fewer children with um, a diagnosis. It could be um, happier families. There are many um, uh, indicators that uh, exist, at least in the Norwegian context, where the government try to monitor the, the health and well-being of the people living in the municipalities. So those are, of course, um, indicators that could be used, but many of them are long-term, and it's not always easy to link them to a specific effort or uh, way of working, but they're clearly part of the picture. Um, we can, of course, ask the parents what they think. Um, it's not necessarily uh, perfect correlation with the parents' satisfaction and the quality and whether or not they have all their problems are gone. But it is an indication and, and I think if the parents are in general satisfied with what is offered, they're more likely to accept um, the services offered, listen to advice and um, that is certainly a very important starting point for doing Work. And I also think that the professionals working uh, in centers, both 
the nurses, the psychologists, the social workers, that they can have uh, a valid opinion about the services, the quality of the services that they deliver to the family. And in general, um, when we are traveling around to different municipalities, uh, I meet a lot of very engaged people and have very high standards for their work. So I think they uh, can have a, a very good estimate of the service quality. And of course, these three indicators should be pulled together. So, and I think um, that will give us a picture of the quality of the service. Of course, in addition, it, it, there are other requirements that uh, it, should be an, it should be entitled to good services regardless where you live in the country. Um, they should be easy accessible. And of course, the government is interested that it should be as inexpensive as possible. So there are other aspects of quality, of course, but these are the main three things that we uh, try to examine in our study. This is just a picture from one of the family centers. It's from Fauske. It's a small town uh, close to them. And they were part of the early uh, trial project and established a family center quite early. And here we are meeting, working there. And this is a, a nurse. Um, was ready. I was just popped in and asked her, can I take your picture before the next family was coming? Um, and uh, yeah, uh, the model that we use when we when we try to um, see how these professionals are working and how they they uh, experience their job is called the job um, job demands resources model. And it's sort of there are many, of course, rewarding aspects of working with children and families, but of course there are um, demands too. Um, just seeing children and families struggling uh, may be a burden. And, uh, and it, in, in, at least in Norway, a large amount of the people working in these centers are women. And most of them have families and children of, of their own. So both the paid and the unpaid part of the work um, puts uh, stress on the individual. So we are trying to, to sort of think of these conditions in, in um, by using this model. And you can, or, you can um, sort of uh, group working conditions into job demands, which is the workload you have to do, the time pressure. Uh, you have job resources. And for instance, having a good collaboration with your colleagues could be a job resource, uh, support from your leader, um, other things. And ideally, job demands um, should be as low as possible, but at a certain point, they may lead to burnout, which means leads to health problems. Job resources, on the other hand, may buffer negative impacts of job demands, and more important, lead to engagement, which is what we, what we want in people in this job. And hopefully, um, a high level of engagement will lead to positive organizational consequences, including that they stay in their jobs, they perform high quality work, and, um, and that this is uh, a great benefit to the family. So this is the model that we, uh, underlies the, uh, the survey that we are doing among the professionals. And then we sometimes, we repeat this three times so that eventually we'll be able to see how this develops over time. And um, as many of these centers are, and municipalities are constantly reorganizing things, it's not ideally from a researcher's standpoint, they would just keep doing exactly what they're doing and not change while we're uh, in, this, in the middle of the research. But of course, they, they, they change all the time. And um, so we're, we're keeping track of them over three years. And um, now I'll come to the part where I'll, I'll present some preliminary results. This is based on the first 500 employees uh, included in the study. Um, this, most of them work in family center, family um, houses, or at least where they have co-located or organized their services together. But there are a few 
the municipalities who have chosen different models. And if you think back on the model with um, circles, uh, about job resources, what do the people working there see as their main resources, or what would improve their um, uh, job situation so that they could offer better services to, to children and families? And um, here is a list we provided for them, and they were asked to say, will this help? And the percentage is the number who sort of agreed uh, and strongly agreed to the, that these things would be a, a good thing to have. Um, many said training courses, supervision in difficult cases, um, but the top one is more time with every family. And not necessarily a lower workload, but more time. So that means that they, they don't, they prefer to work more directly with family. And quite a large number also want more interventions available. And they also could write up their own uh, special if they had other uh, other things they thought that this would be nice to have. But we see that this picture varies between the municipalities. So in some municipalities, they, uh, many would say better collaboration, uh, but in other places they say uh, more intervention. So it varies. <coughs> we also asked them to rate the quality And um, they were overall very positive. 82% said that the service is good or very good value what is offered. 18% sort of, and a, a very small percent uh, said that services are not good. Which is nice that they are positive towards um, the, the outcome of we also asked about collaboration, which is, um, has been a very uh, important argument for co-organizing. And 41% um, said it's easy to get help from other services in the work with children and their families. 41% um, said that they agreed or strongly agreed with that. Um, it could have been higher, uh, I think. Um, and also, um, service agree on the problem definition, type of interventions that I need. A third agreed to that. And um, the highest rating was given by that the collaboration is respectful, which is, but of course it would be nice to have help if you need help with a child from the specialist healthcare service or from the GP. Um, we also assessed the level of burnout and engagement, which are sort of an indicator of the well-being of the people working in the centers. And um, <clears throat> the most important uh, aspect of, of uh, burnout is exhaustion. And here, the mean is slightly lower than the norm on this scale, Norway, uh, which is good. Um, cynicism, it's much lower than the average, and engagement, it's also higher. So overall, this picture is positive, working. I'm <coughs> we also looked at some initial correlations. Psychologists love correlations. It's an indicator of a strong thing, uh, co-vary. And we've been very interested in leadership, collaboration, and how that links to both individual um, feelings, but also the quality of the service. And both of them are linked to quality, high quality services. And good leadership and good collaboration is also linked to lower levels of burnout, higher levels of engagement which is very positive. That is also an argument that organizing services in a way 
that promotes collaboration is very good. Autonomy as um, being able to influence how you work is also a very positive factor. And the opposite, work conflict, is linked in the other direction. So this sort of supports the initial model with the circles, where we've tried to group things into job demands and resources and see how this leads to uh, burnout and engagement, and then it's linked to outcomes on the other end for families and children. We've also done user satisfaction studies in, in open kindergarten, uh, both with um, interviews, but also with um, questionnaires. And the families, uh, especially, it's mostly visited by mothers who bring their own child, and they are very satisfied with being able to be there, with the well-being of the child when in the open kindergarten, with the staff, the way that they are treated and treated, and the benefits for the child. <coughs> and um, when we pull all this together, 95% that they are very satisfied with the service. Some aspects had lower ratings, and that was physical aspects. Many wanted longer open hours. And um, they wanted. Um, also some aspects of information and being able to participate in the type of service. But overall, um, the families enjoy being in the open kindergarten. Um, the, the PhD student, Ingun, who has been uh, sort of living in these family houses, she has done interviews and observations with them. And um, she's very interested in how the low threshold um, services are included and in how that works and is experienced by the families and um, children. And she has defined low threshold service as, for instance, open kindergarten, uh, universal parenting programs, and um, other types of sort of arenas where people can come without having to sign up, make an appointment, and meet other people in the local community. And, um, She's asked how these services differ from the traditional services offered. And, and based on the parents' and the professionals' perspective, she found that there were four sort of things that defined this. It was easy access, that being able to come there. And if you don't have a car and then traveling with a small child for long distance, make it um, the threshold a little bit too big. So easy access. Low level of bureaucracy, no signing up. Collaborative competences that people with different professional background uh, easily available. And having an inclusive setting, uh, a friendly place to come. So I'll try to say a little bit about the lessons or the things that I have learned so far. Um, we're halfway into this project and uh, also a little bit based on what we've learned so far since the beginning of the first family centers in Norway. And one thing is that it takes time and energy to establish these organizations. Um, they are sometimes in Norway, they've been initiated by people working in the services. Then they have to try to convince the politicians to make the decision. In other cases, they've been it's been the politicians who said, I think we should organize the services this way. And I think the best way of success, if you can get the forces from the bottom <laughs> and also from, um, from the political level, then I think the, the success is, more, uh, it's, it's easier to get this going. Um, I heard someone estimated that it takes five years from have the initial idea until you have found the house and are able to in, start up work in this way. Uh, as we saw from some of the studies, um, the original model in Norway with the four sort of core services have developed in many different ways. And 
this furnish, and as I said, like to say, the furnishing of the house is very different from municipality to municipality. And I think that I don't think there is um, any strong push towards organizing it in a specific way, but hopefully we can, after a while, make some recommendations in terms of what the house should include as a basis. Um, and a family center is not a 100% guarantee for good interprofessional collaboration. Uh, just putting services into a house and leaving not guarantee that they work well together. Um, of course, there are um, some services are mainly made up of nurses, some are mainly made up of social workers, uh, some are made up by um, family therapists, and they probably have very little training in collaborating with other professions. Um, so getting this to work well uh, takes time enough. But I do think that having a family center is a good platform for um, interprofessional collaboration, and also a good platform for delivering interventions, and it provides uh, the accessible services that the parents really appreciate. Some recommenda more recommendations. Um, I think the family, the municipalities need support when establishing uh, such an organization. Um, we as a center try to support them, uh, but um, I think finding ways of uh, distributing information um, getting everyone to adopt the idea and, uh, and ensuring that this um, organization that you get the benefits of having people uh, in, in close proximity. Uh, I also think that a good organizational framework needs to be in place, uh, including leadership, arenas for collaboration, uh, legal considerations, the legal framework need to support this way of working. Um, economy, etc. And I think one should decide and have a very um, sort of uh, informed decision in terms of what type of interventions should be offered um, and, and what type of services should be. Uh, and then I think a strong focus on the professionals, uh, the people working in the centers, because they are essential uh, to the, the the quality, um, focus on leadership and uh, on collaboration. I think that is probably recommendations I can make so far uh, when starting up a type of organization like this. Then uh, I think we have a few minutes for questions. Sure, thank you, Monica. I think this was really good uh, presentation and help, helps us a lot when we are improving the, the well-being of children and families by networking the, the services better. But why don't we stand up and, and give our <laughs> applause <laughs> why, before... Uh, thanks. It, it is time for, for a few questions. Uh, I, I, could, I could start with one from the, our message... Um, 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 wall. Uh, so there was a question about the, the, how do you succeed to get both mothers and fathers to, um, <laughs> together in the family center working approach and on the other hand how do you in your evaluations if you took the multiplicity of families like the immigration um, parents are, uh, there is a quite a big part of the population in Norway, how have you succeeded in approaching the, this yeah. aspect? Ideally, we should have all the questionnaires in at least 30 languages, mm -hmm. which of course we can. Uh, we have them in English. We try to approach the, the family come with a different background. Uh, and, but in fact, many of them use the open kindergarten. Yeah. Uh, and many of those fathers from those families use the open kindergarten. Um, but it is, in all fairness, a very well, uh, dominated arena, both people working there and also some of their parents. I, when I look at the questionnaire, who is responding, 
the user satisfaction, it is most mother. Um, so the father responds if there is no mother, uh, then takes that role. So I think that, that is a struggle. Uh, I think it has helped a little bit that um, most fathers take uh, parent leave and then um, they, the open kindergarten is a very nice place where you can come and meet other parents, including other fathers. Uh, but I think there is uh, more work that needs to be done to increase participation. Uh, so I'm Venla Berry from Vastelito, the Family Federation of Finland, which is an NGO. Thank you for your presentation. As a researcher, I'm really glad that you're doing research in, in Norway in order to improve the, the facilities and the services for families. And I, I'm a bit worried that in Finland there's no such plans with the, with the Lapia uh, Thing going on, but uh, let's hope that we get some research going on in Finland as well. But um, my question was that you get really high rates of, of well, the, the people who are using the centers are really uh, satisfied with them, yep. the families. I was wondering if you were, um, have you looked at the socioeconomic differences or the socioeconomic background of the people who use the services? You kind of talked about it just mm. <laughs> now, but. Um, how much is it, because the, the problem often is that people who are very educated and from well, you know, well-being people um, use these services more, even if they're low, th low threshold accessible services. So uh, do the Nor Norwegian family centers, uh, have, they, um, have they managed to reach uh, people from different socioeconomic backgrounds or lower socioeconomic backgrounds as well? We haven't gone into detail in terms of that, looking at the satisfaction studies, but as in most cases the healthcare station is part of the center, that means that almost all families come with their new babies. Um, so, so that is a good point for reaching them. Uh, in terms of the open kindergarten, what we've seen so far that it's sort of representative of the people living in that area, uh, but it, it is the problem. Uh, we have the same problem as you sort of mentioned that those who are highly, who, who uh, require more, who are more educated, they uh, benefit or, or use the services more. And I think that's certainly true for some of the, the courses that is offered. And sometimes when we look at the, the background of parents, they, they at least have a master degree. Uh, but um, I think the open kindergarten is uh, or similar uh, arenas is very low threshold. Um, of course, there were, are families who do not participate, but you don't have to sign up. It, it doesn't require much. You are there with, in your capacity as, as parent, and um, th there's little requirement. Usually, uh, the people working, uh, the professionals working there, are, they have a really good eye for, for people, and they uh, are very good in terms of including them uh, by making a meal or playing with the kids, stuff like that. Um, in an earlier uh, user satisfaction study, uh, we found that uh, immigrants had slightly lower um, rating of, of satisfaction. And that could be that um, could be a communication problem, it could be that they had more needs uh, and had higher expectations to what, what type of help they would get in the, in the open kindergarten. But overall, they, uh, it seems attended by the uh, same people that live in that specific area. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Perhekeskuspaneelin uh, osanottajat voivat jo alkaa henkisesti valmistautumaan siirtymään tuonne eteen, mutta sillä aikaa kun siirrytte, niin kysyn Monikalta vielä yhden kysymyksen. Uh, um, you, you talked a lot about the open uh, kindergarten, and I, I think in Finland, a lot of the similar services are provided by the NGOs and also um, parishes. Yeah. Uh, so, do you have that uh, aspect in same, Norway? Yeah, we have the same system in Norway. So, in many houses, it's done like that. And in some cases, the family center collaborates with the 
the NGOs that offer open kindergarten. So that, that is the same. Thank you. My name is Paulina Lampinen. I come from a, a Foundation for Children and Youth with Disabilities. Uh, and you may already guess that my question is about disabled people and yeah. their accessibility for your services in the family houses. Some of the family centers have a focus on that, and they have uh, things that they offer to families with, uh, where the children have disability and have needs that continue uh, over the years. And um, I, I think that that is uh, the, the upper floor of the, the house that also needs to be in place. Uh, so even if those families sometimes will receive services from the health specialist healthcare service, they live in the municipalities and need a place where they can come and, and have something for them and also where the other services are coordinated. So, but it varies a lot. Uh, some municipalities has a strong focus on that too, uh, others that's not so salient. Thank you. Kiitos. Uh, and I think you gave us a lot of uh, things to learn and uh, take into that intention when we are designing our own family center model in Finland. And we are grateful to you. This is just where you find more information. Um, when, um, some years ago, it translated, we had made a book about family centers, different chapters. We even did a, an English a translation, so it's on online PDF. And we also tried to update, to have more research findings. And, and I do encourage um, have some sort of research mm. along uh, your very ambitious reform and um, even though when you do uh, research on practice mm. and municipalities and people who are changing all the time, it's not ideal from a research standpoint, but it can be done. And I think, I, I do think that the service profit from being part of the research project. Thank you. And let's give a hand. And you can stand up in, in case you want some activity. <laughs> yes. Kiitoksia.